Hello everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Hack Slash Loot. I always want to say Hack Slash and Loot, but that is indeed not the title as you can see. This is a new roguelike dungeon crawler that was just released on Steam. Well, you know, I can't really say when because this video is going to go up at an indeterminable date. But it came out on Steam, uh, you know, around the beginning of April. And, you know, in the Legend of Grimrock, let's look at, I made a lot of comments about how that game was very similar to Dungeons of Dreadmore. Well, this game is extraordinarily similar to Dungeons of Dreadmore. Just, like, before we even get started, you have to take a look at this screen, because there's a lot of shit going on here. Um, obviously we're gonna ignore the credits at the top here, but it's cool that this is basically a game made by one dude. Uh, we're gonna go down to this little area right here, and you can see that you can actually change your character. So we could be a woodland elf who is an archer, we could be a human wizard. Uh, if we go way back here, we can be a human Saracen, I have no idea what that means. Uh, or we could be a random character, which means they will just give us a character. Uh, and there are apparently 32 characters that you can unlock. As you can see, I only have three right now, because I just got started about a half hour ago with this game. Uh, there's also a number of quests, but you could also do a random quest, and I believe that they are populated, or generated randomly, uh, every time that you do them. So unlike Legend of Grimrock, this is, uh, randomly generated, and as such probably has maybe a little bit more replay value than a game like that. Not to say one is better than the other. We are going to go with random quest, and random character, and then we'll get started here. Alright, I've actually never done this quest, so you gotta give me a second to read this. Dark hearts and evil minds. Okay, finish the jun finish the dungeon. Get a mighty suit of armor, helm, and shield that once belonged to a fabled hero. I can do that. Probably not, actually. So as we get started here, like the game has already started. Uh, we have a smart elf or a swart a swart elf. Okay, right next to us, and this is actually cool because we'll get a chance to explain the combat. But first, we have to talk about the screen. If you look at the bottom left, uh, this is like our character sheet, basically. So we've got a uh, robe on right now, we're carrying a staff, so we are a wizard character. We also have some boots, which are important. Uh, they cost 500 gold. You, gold, you can get them from the side shop, or the, uh, the main shop. That was a Dota joke. And uh, basically this game is controlled entirely through the mouse, but you can also use the arrow keys or the number pad on your keyboard if you so choose. Uh, we're just going to click to attack here. And as you can see, I did 7 damage there, and he did... I didn't see how much he did. He missed, okay. So we'll try it again. This is a turn-based dungeon crawler, similar to Dungeons of Dreadmore. So uh, we have time to actually plan out our ideas. So I can pick up this dagger, but you can see how it will affect my statistics here. So like if I pick it up, it goes in my offhand, and it actually allows me to do damage up close, I think. But... Anyway, I'm a little bit confused about that. Even, like, still, I'm a little bit confused about the basic mechanics in the game. Uh, but let's move on here. Now, you might be looking at my character sheet and wondering, like, what the hell do all these numbers mean? Okay, well, the first one with the sword and the 43 slash 2, the first number is always the chance to hit. And the second number is the damage that it'll do maximally. So, like, for... Melee attack and ranged attack will ignore that for now, but for my magic attack, this third one here, I have a 60% chance to hit, and the maximum damage I can do is 8. So you see here, there we go. Well, that actually worked out really well. We'll attack this elf as well. We probably gotta get one more hit in there. Perfect. There are some boots of elven kind. So we'll walk over onto them, and then pick those up, because you can see that is going to improve all of my percentages and my max damage. So they are definitely better than the current boots that I am wearing right now. Now, it looks like we got some Maidens over here, so let's release them, and hopefully nothing bad will help. Oh, first we're gonna attack Deep Dwarf. Deep, Dw Deep Dwarf, coincidentally, uh, my favorite sex position. There we go, finally killed him. Now, let's free this Maiden. Alright, and it looks like they're gonna join our party. I kinda thought for a second things were gonna get, like, Duke nukem -y there, and they were gonna, you know, fillet me. Let's take down the shield. Do I wanna pick this up? Maybe. Okay, friendly human, get out of my way, please. I, friendly human, I want to pick up the shield. I'm going to go up. No, don't, don't, oh God, don't attack her. Oh, no, just run. Okay, now the, one of them is on my side and the other one is going to kill. Okay. Well, we do have some items here now. What do we have? We've got a hood of defense. Definitely going to pick that up. And now we have our shield, which I, uh, yeah, I think I do want to pick up my shield. It lowers my uh, melee attack, it lowers my magic attack by one, but it raises my defense greatly, so I think this is a smart decision. Alright, so I've already killed one maiden, let's try not to make that a habit. I'm gonna walk down all the way down here, check out this chest, 
And there's another helmet that is also going to raise my defense, although it is going to lower my magic attack a little bit. Okay, now we can start moving on here. So in the brief amount of time that I've spent with this game, this game, oh god, god there's so many of them. This game is brutal, man. Like, I, the first ten minutes that I spent with this game, I'm going to die here. Just run. Where's my maiden? She should be tanking this damage for me. Um, the first, like, ten minutes that I spent with this game, I died three times. And it's only now that I've got, like, kind of a basic understanding of the mechanics that I feel like I may have a chance to actually succeed. But first we have to kill these guys. Like, this is harder than Dungeons of Dreadmore, in my opinion. And not just because, because the user interface is, like, a little bit more cryptic, at least in my opinion. It seems like there's been a lot of roguelikes on Steam lately, right? That's not just me? How's my maiden doing? She only has three health left. Oh god, she's dead. But I did manage to kill Deep Dwarf. So we can move on here. Uh, I did not expect to succeed there. What is this? Use Power Crystal. Uh, I'm not a Scientologist, but uh, let's do it. Enchanted my helmet. Gave helmet vulnerability to silver and gives helmet three magic. I have no idea what that means. Um, I don't want anything to do with this Power Crystal. Okay. Moving on. Uh, this is definitely like one of the more hardcore roguelikes that I've played on Steam recently. Like, this game does not hold your hand at all. I had to go, like, look up a separate tutorial online because there's no tutorial built into the game. Uh, and, you know, in some ways that's bad because I found it really difficult to get into. Particularly, I mean, this is a little bit maybe biased or even superficial, but because the game is graphically uh, a little bit... I don't want to say muddled, and I also don't want to say, like, bad, but graphically simple, but also a little bit confusing. Do you, do you see what I'm getting at here? Like, things are not as clear as they are in a game like Dungeons & Dreadmore. I, I feel like I'm being really negative right here, which is not fair, because I'm actually enjoying my time with this game so far. I'm my uh, main guy here. But definitely, this is a game that's a little bit harder to get into. I do not want to pick that up. Uh, a game that's a little bit harder to get into, because it, it doesn't hold your hand at all. Let's make sure we survive here. Okay, these goddamn deep dwarves are impossible to kill, apparently. Because I only have a 64% chance to hit. Okay, I'm just gonna... I, there we go. He's dead. I should be able to kill this bat easily. I can only take two more damage, so if this bat kills me, uh, it kills me. One more. Oh, one more damage. Okay, we did manage to kill the bat. And there's a bed, which maybe I can sleep in. Mm, I will absolutely put on this for some added defense. Lowers my magic damage a little bit, but oh well. Thought maybe I could sleep in that bed, Minecraft style. Regenerate some health. That's not really Minecraft style. That's like all RPGs ever style. Now, I can only take like one more hit of damage. So, I am basically screwed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run away. <laughs> and continue running away. Oh god, the bat is flanking me. You know what I will say is that the AI in this game is like... Ah, there we go, I died. It's actually really good, like... You won't be able to see it for a second, but if it's almost like a chess match. Like, if I put myself in a position where if the enemy moves towards me, I can hit them, they just won't move. So it's not like Dungeons of Dreadmore where enemies will just, like, flood towards you and you can just get them in a choke point and take them out. It takes a little bit more tactics. All right, here we're doing Tower of the Magus, which is our next quest. I'm going to be an archer, apparently. This is a quest that I've tried a few times, but I've never succeeded at. Now, this quest is a pain in the ass, because almost every single chest you try to open is a Mimic. Like, straight-up Dark Souls style. Yep, there we go. Just popped it open. Immediately Mimic. But once I kill him, I should get a good item. What is this? Ga Ceremonial Gauntlets. Uh, it's gonna improve my... Uh, it's gonna improve my melee attack, but I don't have a melee weapon right now, so it doesn't matter. So we're just going to shoot these rats. I can shoot these rats. And the cool thing about this one is that there's all these glyphs on the ground. So I know I'm making this comparison, like, endlessly. But you got to admit the similarities are absolutely, like, demonstrable and there. Uh, but like Dungeons of Dreadmore, this level has a bunch of glyphs on the ground. And all these glyphs do different things. So if we step on this first one, uh, dispels all my enchantments. So that's, like, meaningless. Let's step on the second one. Gives Archer magic defense, so that's good, but like you'll see a, a ton of glyphs here, and they all do very different things. So let's just make our way through. This is almost guaranteed to be a mimic. Oh, no. So we got a crossbow, which is going to be way better than our existing bow, so let's pick that up. Uh, and I don't know if I explained this before. I explained it for magic damage, but like these uh, numbers here... 
work exactly the same for uh for like your ranged attack so the first number here is my percentage chance to hit which is 60 63 percent and my max damage is uh 14 and as you can see if you mouse over here uh, max damage is e equals damage minus defense so if my enemy's defense is higher then my max damage uh, is much lower and I think there is like a, a level of randomness that is applied to that as well let's step on this glyph Okay, that revealed the entire level to me, which is awesome. So now I can kind of decide where I want to go. You can see this, like, blinking map here, uh, or this blinking dot here. That's going to be the way to the next level. So, again, similar to uh, a lot of dungeon crawlers whose names start with D and will remain largely nameless. Uh, we're trying to, like, basically get down to the bottom of the dungeon. But for now, I'm just going to shoot these guys. Working out fairly well so far, although I have low health and apparently cannot hit something directly in front of my face. With a ranged weapon. Come on. He's got five health points left. One more hit will do it. 63% chance to hit. And I am missing almost every attack. So we got a full steel helm here. Definitely going to pick that up. Beats my Link helmet. A complaint that I have about this game. That I think a lot of people will have about this game. Is that your um, character model does not reflect the equipment that you pick up. And again. In Dungeons of Dreadmore that was a problem as well. Which is kind of like why the Binding of Isaac is... Hmm, one second, I want to see if I want to pick this up. Yes, I have nothing in that slot anyway. Um, one of the reasons why Binding of Isaac is, is such a cool game is because, you know, not only do you get that replay value that comes innately with a game like this with randomly generated dungeons, uh, as well as... Hmm, uh, randomly generate, generated dungeons, as well as, um, like, a bunch of different items and equipment you can use, but in Isaac, like, your character looks different every single time because it's always... You know, a random set of items, essentially, that you're getting. Uh, so it'd be cool if, like, your equipment actually was reflected on your character in this. But sadly, that is not the case. I gotta look on this map momentarily and figure out where the heck I am. I think we want to come up here. Mm, yes, okay, and then come up here. And then this is a dead end. Was I not just standing here a second ago? Where is my character on this map? The other thing uh, I think people will have complaints about is that, like, the user interface is, like, seriously confusing sometimes. At least for me. I've got this, this screen blown up a little bit. Like, it was originally a much smaller window size. Uh, but I still have trouble seeing things sometimes. So we'll just keep doing some attacks here. Uh, I am maybe going to die against these ooze monsters? There's a lot of them. Seems like I've come across some sort of mob trap room. Okay, there we go. There's a painting on the wall. Let's take a look at... Oh, we can't. It, it is a masterpiece, though, apparently. And if we come up through here, there's another glyph. What is this one? Glyph reveals level to Archer. Okay. M is in Mancy. Deep Dwarves again. Some of the biggest pains in the ass. So far, um, people have been giving me advice that like the, the melee hero is the easiest one to use. I'm going to die here. The melee hero is the easiest one to use, but I actually find that the ranged heroes are easier because I can, you know, abuse the level a little bit. Oh, I can't see him. I can abuse the level a little bit in order to, like, get extra hits in before they can get to me. Alright, that worked out pretty well. Uh, we'll search the bookcase, Diablo style. See what they have here. Tome of Renown. That will raise our defense, and that means it is a good pickup because otherwise I could die fairly quickly. There's our way up to the next level. I knew that was going to be a mimic. We could really use like some kind of health potion or something here. Let's see. Mm, I guess we might as well pick up this pendant because we have nothing in its slot anyway. And we'll shoot this bat and step on these glyphs and hope that these glyphs give us health. That sounds crazy, but it's something that has happened many times before. Magic defense. Okay, that's useful. Dispels all of my enchantments. That is not useful. Uh, and let's try to fight this chest. It's probably a mimic, but maybe we'll succeed. Come on. Oh, God. Oh, I got full health. How did that happen? You can see my health down at the very bottom on the on the, the far left, if I hadn't mentioned that before. Mysterious quarterstaff. I have no need for that. I will just stick with my crossbow. Thank you very much. And let's go through these chests, and then we'll try to go down to the next level, even though I will probably get destroyed. Come on. That is a robe of wonder. We'll reduce my defense, so I don't want to wear it. Look at, like, all these chests are mimics. I would say maybe 80% of the chests you encounter are going to be mimics. The ceremonial helmet does nothing for us. Hopefully a good glyph here. 
Six health. Okay, that is actually a really good glyph. And we'll go to level two, where we will encounter, as you might expect, more difficult monsters and probably a much lower chance of success. Can you just hit him, please? Thank you. Okay. Glyph gives Ooze six health. He took my good glyph! But luckily we managed to hit him three times in a row. That's, like, unprecedented. Oh, they, they replicate? Okay, I have been killed, uh, and I feel like I deserved it. You know what? Let's give it one more shot. We'll see how we do here. Journey to the Kimon. Don't even worry about that for now, you know? I'm not going to read all the on-screen text, so I don't feel like just pausing there for 25 minutes. Suffice to say that so far, at least in my opinion, most of the quests have seemed very similar. Uh, but apparently there are like different stages in each one. That looks like a seriously good crossbow. That might be really useful if my character was not a wizard. Um, but I've heard people be like tweeting at the developer being like, How do I get past this very specific part? Oh come on, I'm gonna die here. Uh, so obviously like there are unique elements to each one. We're gonna pray at this altar to the Nilbog god of goblin races. Nilbog? That's goblin backwards! Alright, so that gives me one extra magic damage. I am probably gonna die here. Unless I can get extraordinarily luck lucky because I have almost no health. Pop this helmet on. Well, not even a helmet. What is it? A hood. Hopefully these guys can't do ranged attacks. There's no way out of this now. I go. Oh, that's one way, I guess. And there's some armor on this dummy. Scale mail. Okay. Gonna lower our magical damage a little bit, but it's worth it for the added defense. Pop open this barrel. Pick up a brew of vitality. That sounds like something I could really use right now. Give us another seven health. I mean, that's not a lot, but it's a start. We got a ton of goblins in here. So we're just gonna, you know, try not to be in the dark here. Make sure I'm in a position where I can attack these guys without getting hit very much, preferably. There we go. This is why I prefer the ranged characters. Got broken utensils, no need for those, I would say. Pop open this door, pop open the barrels. Why am I not popping open the barrels? Heroic potion. Gives me another seven health. Okay, I gotta start getting these barrels more. Use the potion of amazement. Two melee and one melee damage. Both of which completely unimportant. Oh my god, I've been killed again. Well, in any case, this has been hack slash loot. I'm just gonna take us back to the main menu here. Uh, definitely an intriguing title on Steam, and the price is right right now. It's a bargain. I think it's normally going to be seven dollars, like seven ninety nine. So I guess eight dollars technically. But right now it's on for forty percent off, so it's like four dollars and fifty cents. Kind of unusual pricing scheme, but. Uh, definitely, especially at that sale price, this seems like a worthy title to pick up if you're into those roguelike dungeon crawlers and you're kind of sick of Dungeons of Dreadmore, or you're into something that seems a little bit more hardcore, uh, because it's harder to get into, but I also have a feeling that this offers a, a lot of depth as well. Uh, but definitely a cool title, worth checking out. I'm not sure if there's a demo on Steam, but there's a demo available on the developer's website, so you should go check that out if this looks interesting. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.